Stephen, could you let us in on a secret? So, so just so you're clear that we've practiced this, this is going to sound absolutely terrible. So, so we're, I'm going to throw out some kind of uh, left of center answers, which is going to weird him out. Um, so here comes the first one. Um, so what kind of secrets do you want to know, Paul? Secrets that I don't tell my wife, secrets that I don't tell my CFO. What kind of secrets would you like to know? Well, let's just pretend it's the two of us here. You okay. Know. So I'm ignoring you. Okay, fine. <laughs> How do you become the largest and fastest growing insurtech in Europe with a product like pet insurance? <laughs> So, so hands up in the room, how many of you own a pet? Okay, so it's so a kind of interesting but small number. Um, let me tell you that in San Francisco, there are now more pets than there are children. Um, and, uh, and, and in Tel Aviv as well, right? Okay, so, so not quite in London yet, but London is heading in that direction. Um, and the other thing that's kind of really interesting about this space is that if you survey pet owners, they tell you they have a better connection with their pets than 50% of them do with their own parents. Um, and, and in this process, you, I think you're beginning to learn a little bit about the way in which pet ownership is dramatically changing. Um, and, uh, and so we are in the UK um, for only at this stage. Um, as you may or may not know, the UK is the world's largest pet insurance marketplace. Um, this year, it will do one and a half billion sterling of premium income, uh, and it's growing fast. Um, the marketplace doubles every five years, um, and globally, the marketplace is on track right now to hit $7 billion of GWP. So the marketplace is doing this. Um, and our market share is also doing this. Uh, we launched into this space uh, two and a quarter years ago, uh, and in that, space, in that time, we have over 5% market share. So, so what you should think of is that as a kind of a multiplying factor. So we've got a very fast-growing market share of a very fast-growing market. Um, and those two things together have given us access to this exponential opportunity. So, so the, the short answer to your question is, Paul, being in the right place at the right time. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, your target demographic, pet parents, and how you reach them? So, so the, the other thing that, uh, that you may be perhaps unsurprised to know, um, and I suspect this is true in Israel as well, is that um, pet owners are typically more wealthy and more healthy than the average. Um, and are you a pet owner? <laughs> Excellent. Um, me too. Um, and, uh, and so we are targeting people who have got money and who are really genuinely interested in their own health and consequently they're interested in their pet's health as well. So, so this is a, a, another multiplying effect, which means that when we target this marketplace, uh, we target it for, into an affluent space um, our average premium is over one third higher than the market average in the UK. We are definitely not a, a pilot high, sell it cheap player, um, but we very much focus on the value end of the marketplace. You buy a premium product, you pay a premium price from it, and you expect a premium service. In insurance, you're operating in an industry that's traditionally not known for a very high degree of customer satisfaction, to put it mildly. And but, this is the service point that I'm talking about. But uh, for bought by many, it seems to be an entirely different story. So where are these off-the-charts NPS and FIVO scores coming from? Right. So I should tell you what our off-the-chart uh, uh, NPS and FIVO scores are, because he knows this, right? But I'm guessing that none of you do. Um, so our net promoter score for last year across all customer touch points, so that's not just at the point of sale, but it's at claiming, complaining, midterm adjustments, cancellations. Ac across all of this last year, uh, our net promoter score was 79. Um, and in case you thought you heard me incorrectly, uh, I did indeed say 79. Uh, last week, uh, just to bring you completely up to speed, uh, our net promoter score was 84. Um, and if you drill into that, the claims only net promoter score, so the subset of that that's just for people who have claimed from us, the last week the net promoter score for claimants was 87. Um, and, 
and this is critically important to us. We are a business that puts pet parents at the very center of who we are and what we do. Our product range, our customer experience is specifically built around what those individuals would want. The products were designed by those individuals in the first place. Every single product is bespoke to each purchaser, uh, and their product document is unique to them. And so when you put them at the very center of what you do, hopefully this is giving you a bit of an idea why it is genuinely possible to get a great net promoter score. But, but don't assume that net promoter score is of itself the end game. It, it very much isn't. Uh, we are, a, of course, uh, a for-profit business. Um, and the implication of great net promoter scores is a huge number of member gets member, so kind of customer referrals to us. Um, and 40% of our sales now are are for free. We do not pay for 40% of our sales. Um, and the other thing that's critically important about all of that is that that also gives rise to huge high uh, re renewal rates. So here's another surprise for you. Uh, so our renewal rates for last week um, for the first year renewal was 93%. So this is the highest it's ever been. So we've been trending upwards, uh, but, uh, but it was 93% last week. And renewals for second year, so people who've done a second year renewal is even higher, uh, it's 95%. So, so you know, high net promoter scores is great. It translates through to dramatically uh, higher renewal rates, which of course drives up lifetime value, which drives up the amount of money we can spend on acquisition. And so this whole thing becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So coming back to my point about exponential growth, hopefully I'm kind of giving you a sense of we don't just have exponential growth, we have profitable exponential growth. So thank you for giving away that secret as well. <laughs> and. Um, you are the fastest growing, you're the largest insure tech in Europe already. Where do you go from there? What's next? Is this just a European opportunity or is it global in nature? So, uh, so interesting. So a couple, couple of things to say. Um, firstly, uh, we are remain completely committed to the UK marketplace. Um, the UK marketplace is a very big and, as I've already told you, fast-growing opportunity space. Um, 84 different brands in the UK in the pet insurance space, so highly competitive. Uh, but in that very competitive space, uh, one player seems to be winning out. I'll give you a clue who that is. Um, and I will bring you completely up to speed. So last night uh, in the UK was the Customer Service Awards. This is across all uh, types of sectors, not just financial services, but across everything. Um, and, uh, and this is a very prestigious award. It's voted for by over 30,000 individuals. Uh, and we were named the pet insurer of choice uh, across all of those 84 different brands uh, last night, uh, which is enormously powerful to us, very, very, very important to who we are. Uh, and we thank each and every one of those 30,000 who voted for us. Um, but coming back to your question, we really genuinely want to take this message more broadly. Um, in the remaining uh, two weeks of June, we will be launching into Sweden. Um, Sweden is the world's most competitive uh, pet insurance marketplace uh, in terms of customer penetration. It's only one third in the UK, uh, it's 60% in Sweden, uh, but we'll be taking some of that sophistication back to the UK. Um, and, uh, and then, who knows where else? So, four big marketplaces across the globe uh, for pet ownership, uh, US, Germany, China, and Japan. Um, they are hugely untapped. So, if I talk about exponential growth in the UK, you should think about the massive possibility in those countries. Um, in, uh, in the US, pet, pet insurance penetration is just 2%. Uh, in Germany, it's even lower than that. Um, so the opportunity for us to ride this genuinely fast-growing marketplace and to do so from the very front of the pack, uh, kind of that's a pet reference, by the way, from doing it from the very front of the pack, uh, this is great, a great opportunity for us, and we absolutely will be there. Thank you for sharing that outlook with us and for sharing your secrets for growth in InsurTech. Good. So, so folks, like if there's anything else you want to talk about, we very much pride ourselves as being an open book. Um, there is absolutely nothing we wouldn't tell you. Um, and, and so if there's some stuff that you would like to know, uh, rates of growth, so last year we grew 176%. Uh, targets of this year will see us doing the same kind of thing. Um, if there's anything that you would like to know, uh, anything about the secret source, which by the way is not secret, so I don't like this word not at all. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So anything you'd like to know about this, uh, how we harness uh, search 
uh, which is a core part of our history to drive vast amounts of, of non-paid-for search. Uh, really happy to tell any of you this. If you want to bring that knowledge to other spheres outside the pet insurance space, we'd be delighted. You bring it to the pet insurance space, I'm afraid you have to join the back of the queue. Um, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Delighted to have been in Berlin. Fantastic that you laid on some great weather for me. I'm going back to the UK this afternoon where it's been pissing down all day. Um, so thank you very much indeed, and I leave you to your next speaker.